this magic box is necessary for today's video, and spoiler alert, it is way heavier than it looks. Today's focus is one from across the pond. This is the fan <coughs> This is the Dyson DCO3, not the Phantom Fury, but we can probably see the resemblance of these two machines. It's actually not that much, but when's the last time you've seen one of these? Ne or each of these next to each other and there will be more videos of these next to each other in fact there will be a proper comparison coming soon because I've always wanted to do that but this thing is a Dyson DCO3 and right off the bat because my UK collector friends that I'm sure are watching this I'd like to ask for a couple favors first of all if anyone knows where I can find the original purple tools this machine would have came with at a good price, ideally with the adapter that allows you to reverse the wand, that would be ideal, as these are not the best, but they do work in a pinch. Also, this is a later DCO3, after they removed the carrying handle. They also replaced the original filter design with a newer filter design for the pre-motor filter that is still HEPA, but has an internal sock that you can remove it looks very similar to a DC-41 filter, and wash. Here's the problem. On my unit, when I go to unlock this, it gets stuck to the actual mechanism, and I cannot, I cannot get this out. And for obvious reasons, I do not want to break it. And sometimes I'll get this white part removed, but then the little sock on the inside will still be engaged with this top section. And I don't know what to do about that. In fact, you can kind of see that right now. The white part is starting to separate from this middle part, but this is still, you can see the actual Dyson brain in there. You can see that the top part of the filter is stuck to this ring. And I'm not sure how to get that out because I don't want to use anything metal. I don't want to scratch it, but it's, it's stuck like that, so I can't remove this filter, which is unfortunate because I do eventually want to get this filter out um, to show some to show it, you know, on camera. But right now, thankfully, I can kind of line it up in a way that I can close it. Although I feel like I'm breaking it, and I don't like that, but I, I'm sure it's fine. But um, cause I know there is a way to line this up. And, yeah, there is a way to line this up and to get this back into place. So it's not like it's unusable, obviously. It is now locked in place like it should be, and I can use this, but I can't get it out, which is the problem. Now, this part is designed to not budge. This part is designed to just be static. You have to get this filter out to get to this filter and that's pretty typical so right off the bat couple weird things about this design that we immediately notice right off the bat and hence why Dyson didn't stick with this dual stacked filter design um, it just the anytime you have a lever that releases something this is a big problem with you know these types of machines anytime you got a lever that releases something that means that if this part falls down then it's stuck there unless you remove the upper tank so that's a similar thing with this and this filter right here. But yeah, so now we got that little tidbit out of the way, and we're already four minutes in. This is the Dyson DCO3 Absolute Plus, and we already looked at the filters a little bit and touched on the attachments just a fair bit, but this is the machine. So we're gonna do a brief overview of it in this particular video, and then I'm also going to run it. Um, it's not going to be the full review just yet, but it's going to be more of a second impression per se, because I did, of course, unbox it and give some impressions on it when I first got it. Needless to say, it's a fascinating machine, and absolutely, I mean, it's it's even lighter than I thought it would be. This thing is ridiculously light for what otherwise would be a full-size upright. Again, I haven't put this on the scale yet, but I will later on. It is definitely lighter now again, this I've been using this, so it's full of dirt, so it's not a fair comparison, but the, the Fury is definitely a beefier machine, which makes sense because it's better built. 
and um, but and it just has more plastic within everything. This is a lot more creaky and a little bit more flimsy. And you can see it kind of droops back a little bit. You know, just it's it's not very balanced. That is one thing I'll say is that it, it leans backwards a fair bit. You probably can't tell because it, it might just look like a camera angle or something, but it is. If I put, again, this isn't a, the comparison between the O3 and the Fury just yet. But you can see the Fury is a lot straighter. And the 3 is drooping back a little bit, kind of like what some Hoovers used to do. But anyways, so here's the Dyson DC-03. If you've never stepped on one of these before, it's very, very hurtful. And um, we can also see where Dyson decided to cut some corners... Or not really cut some corners per se, but streamline production on modern Dysons. Because this is the core clip that we've always seen on these UK Dyson plugs. And they use this exact clip on the US ones too. Which makes sense, because they can use the exact same clip on every single Dyson no matter what. And the only difference is the literal plug. So the UK would have this plug, the US would have the US plug. And we're talking on modern Dysons. Because this cord clip does exist on modern Dysons. Which is interesting. Yeah, so there's the legendary UK plug with the fuse built in and the gigantic prongs with the uh, plastic portion covering part of the neutral and or, or the alive and neutral contacts. So that way you don't shock yourself, which it is easier to shock yourself on an American plug, especially because there's no there's no switches on the outlets. But on the bright side. Uh, or I should say on the negative side of the UK, is if you do manage to shock yourself, it's twice as dangerous. So, because, you know, you're working with two, 220 volt power versus uh, 110, or I guess, you know, 110 slash 120 compared to 220 slash 240, because um, the US runs on 120 split phase power. Technically, um, Technology Connections viewers would, would say that US, that the US is still 220 broadly, but a lot of that a lot of those phases are split into two 120 volt lines. Anyways, so enough of the electrical chitter chatter. We've got this cable, which is shorter than on plenty of other Dysons. We got the same quick release, and unlike the DC04, which of course wasn't quite out yet, just like the DC01, we can swivel it to 180 degrees because there's no crevice tool or anything getting in the way. We also have a straight handle, which is the only Dyson that's ever had that to my knowledge. Every Dyson handle. Well, I, I, maybe I shouldn't say that because obviously the new ones, because the way the wands work, are straightened. But at the time, these types of wands always had some kind of bend to it. The DC01 had a bend, and the DC04, DC07 had a bend. And then, of course, once we got to the DC14 and then the later DC41s and all that, those were obviously straight because, of course, you had to run hardware through the handle, and you can't do that without a bend. Although the UK somehow found a way to put a swiveling joint in, and I still don't really get how that works on some of their machines. But Americans could never figure that out. We're definitely too dumb for that, which probably explains why we never got those. But, yeah. Now, this is a machine just like the Fury. Again, this isn't a comparison, so I need to stop referencing that. Um, but we do have this handle right here, which allows you to fit the attachments onto the handle just like you would on a Phantom or a Dyson. Again, I keep referencing the Phantom. That's supposed to be a separate video. But attachments go there. You can't put them on the other way. But if you have a certain set of DCO3, if you have the spacer that allows you to put the wand reversed onto the hose, and if you have the specific attachments that have a larger opening and have like a slot on the inside to allow it to fit on the narrow wand, then you can reverse the wand on these, but it's very strange. This, with these attachments, would only do it the DC-04 style way, where or DC-01 or Phantom or whatever, where it would just go on there and then do it like that. In fact, if we put this on, if we twist this, it actually locks a lot better this way. And we put on... The upholstery tool, which I'm always paranoid, I'm going to break it somehow. And then now we can grab, compress the button to release the wand. That pulls down, locks into place, it, which it locks into place much better than my DC04 
really does not like to lock into, pro into place properly, but this one does. And we can, we can clean. And this hose is super long, much longer than the DC-01 from what I understand. This, this is actually like modern Dyson length. I was, I was expecting, since this is kind of a mid-size upright, I was expecting the hose to be much shorter than the DC-04, but it appears to be about the same from what I can tell at least. I haven't yet tried to actually vacuum stairs with this, but I really should because this seems like a Dyson that would be great for vacuuming stairs because not only do you have a super long hose with a wand and cool tools and all that, but you can literally see the bin from every angle, which is the coolest feature that I didn't even really think about until Parwaz mentioned it in one of his videos on one of his DCO3s, mentioning how if you're cleaning stairs or you're cleaning anything where the vacuum is facing away from you, you can still see the bin, which is so cool. You can see the bin from every angle, which is actually a really cool feature. But I didn't even, didn't even really think about, you know, until after I already got this. So it's quite fascinating. And speaking of the bin, which we'll comment on that real quick, we've got a little changeover valve right here. Our carrying handle right here, which on newer DCO3s, there is no secondary carrying handle. They removed that from these models as the early ones had a second handle right here, which did look more symmetrical, but it just got in the way of the tools, especially the crevice tool, and it was just prone to snapping off anyways. And I imagine Dyson wanted to save a couple bucks, so they removed it. And they also, like I mentioned, they changed the filter and you know little other things that they update as the models go on. But this is your sole carrying handle on this machine. And you press that button to remove the bin and cyclone assembly. And this is designed kind of strange because there's nothing holding it on this side. You've got the clip right there that you're supposed to grab and remove to empty the bin. But there's nothing holding it on this side. So if you actually look at this, it's not straight because of just there being nothing holding it on this side. So there's always a little bit of play with the bin. Which you can kind of see if I kind of wiggle this. So it's not quite, you know, the sturdiest thing in the world. So, but when it's actually on the machine, of course, it seals just fine. And again, I'm always a fan of these tall, skinny bins. Again, not to compare it to its competitor, but, which, funnily enough, came first. But, yeah, that just the way that fills up makes a lot more sense to me. It's less likely to get caught in various areas. And the filtration on this is actually quite good considering the long and narrow cyclone actually does seem to do a decent job of filtering. And that is part of the advertising too. If we actually look on this machine, we can see it advertises that it's the lightest bagless upright at just under seven kilograms. It's the slimmest at 142 millimeters. The cleanest, wow, that, that, is the, that is the smallest percentage I've ever seen on a vacuum. I mean, tell me that you've seen a, a more precise percentage, because I've not. They always say 99.95 or 99.98 or 99.99. This is 99.9998%. I don't know any machine that's that specific. I don't even know how they figure that out. So does that technically mean this has the best filtration out of any vacuum? Because every vacuum that I know stops at the second decimal. <laughs> It's like a pie thing where it just keeps going. Of course, this is the first Dyson with brush control and also has the instant telescopic wand and hose. And here's that, here's that uh, clutch system. Now, this machine, I think, has a good clutch, and, but I, it did feel like the brush roll was slowing down a little bit on my carpet, but it could just be because the machine's weaker. I actually don't know. But... As we can see, we see the neutral park and drive system, which is way overly complicated. Again, they've got a little cheat sheet right here to show you which one is which, but it's what you'd expect. Upright mode, uh, or actually no, bare floor mode, upright mode, and carpet mode. That's all there is to it. So bare floor means the brush rolls off no matter what. Uh, carp the, um, what, what would this be? Auto mode, I guess, is where it's, um, is where when it's upright and it's on this setting, you know, by default, then it's in the carpet mode, but it's brush shut off is because it's upright. Then you recline the machine, and now it's in brush roll on mode. So, and we got this cute little window right here, which of course you can't see because it gets 
gummed up the stuff immediately. But yeah. And then here is our little articulating base plate, which is actually kind of cool. We've got a really nice brush roll. Again, beautiful, beautiful condition brush roll on this machine. Very impressed with that. Although the bristles are very sparse. And just like a complaint I have with the DC-25, the space in between these bristles, you're not getting any cleaning at all. So you're not going to get any sort of broad cleaning amongst the whole cleaning path or anything like that. To be fair, a lot of vacuums back then struggle with that, but it seems exacerbated on these older Dysons, especially when you compare it to something like a Ball Animal 3, where the bristles, yes, they're, you know, not quite as long, but they're almost as long on the Animal 3, and they span the entire width of the cleaner head. Um, but yeah, you can see that difference there. And of course, we got this old plate with the little three screw holes. This appears to be a new base plate, or at least it feels like it is, because this is all, I mean, because this part is pristine. Like, there's no wear, zero wear on these. And these are always chewed up from people trying to use screwdrivers and stuff when you're not supposed to. Even coins will still chew them up, even if they're the right coins. And we got these wheels, which they feel like they, feel like they at one point might have had a rubber coating, I know these wheels at one point had a rubber coating, but at this point they're just hard plastic. And these might have had a coating at some point. So it's probably bare floor, bare floor friendly. And of course, like every dice on this bottom portion always gets scraped along this bottom section. And we can see part of the changeover valve, which is actually built into the hose, strangely enough. And just like um, the Phantoms, although not as bad, although much worse and much more aggressive than the Phantoms, um, this thing completely cuts it, itself off and chokes itself when it's in the upright position and the wand is locked in because it just completely cuts off its air and relies on the changeover valve to bleed off air, which can't be good for the motor, but it's still running, so they must have done decently. That's why there's no vent holes here. It's not necessary because there's no air rushing through this when it's actually on the machine. It's once you release the wand that you then feel the air coming in through the machine, through the wand specifically. So that's interesting. So now we're gonna take this, which we don't wanna step on, I've done it before, it's not fun, and we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. And I don't like leaving this thing here because I've, I have dropped this a couple times because again, it just, it pulls itself back. It really wants to fall back. So please don't fall back. Again, very, very short cable. There's not a lot here to work with, unfortunately. But, again, please don't fall. So we've got this little, this little converter here, which we're going to go ahead and plug in. So we're going to plug that in right there, and we're going to power that on. So now we've got... I'm honestly surprised that it doesn't use two outlets, but... Whatever, it appears to work. Because I don't, I don't know how you get a 120 volt outlet to go to a 220 volt cleaner, but whatever. I'm not an electrician, so I'm not going to doubt that. All right. Now this thing is loud. Unfortunately, it's it's a very because of how small and lightweight the motor is. It's also a very whiny motor, and there's a lot of air die off. This thing is not the machine you would get for airflow. Because I mean, you just look at the thing and you can see how complicated the air path is, even for a Dyson. But nevertheless, we're gonna go ahead and give this a run. <laughs> Still can't quite get onto a couch.
Okay, so... I don't know what I just did, but I'm regretting it. Because, yeah, I tried to... Try to get greedy and clean up, which I've done with other clean. I'm done with other vacuums. I've done it with that machine a bunch of times. I've sucked up, you know, fluff and stuff with the Fury, and it handled it just fine. But this thing, I just sucked up a bunch of it, and then I immediately felt some resistance, and I thought I started to smell some burning, and I was like, no, 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 no. This is the last machine I want to, you know, have a crazy issue with so and of course this thin opening means that I'm trying to just grab stuff out of the roller without taking the sole plate off it's kind of annoying but yeah so that was not a well this thing I'm not gonna say it wasn't a smart idea because it should have handled it just fine but I guess technically speaking my ultra rare British collectible Dyson shouldn't have received the wrath of you know, some stuffing from a, from a chew toy, but either way, I'm going to go ahead and you see that what's in the bin there too, it immediately just covered up the shroud and everything. Oh, this poor thing. But, uh, yeah, so I'll go ahead and clean or clear off the rest of this. And you can see there's some hair on the brush roll too already. Obviously hair tangling on this is going to be an issue, just like with all these Dyson brush rolls. See, there's a good amount of hair on this side, too. So just in this small area, there's a good amount of hair tangles. But that's to be expected. These Dysons are always bad at tangling hair. So I'll clean, clean this off real quick. All right, so let's go ahead and try to take this base plate off. Hey, there we go. So that came off easy. That belt feels a little bit stretched to me. Oh, that just popped out the brush roll and I don't know how it goes back in. Okay, well that's great. Probably should put this in a tripod. All right. And I was gonna pull this, this hair off anyways. So. I guess I might as well show that. Again, there's a good amount of, good amount of hair on this side. something like this I'm not gonna yeah you know, I'm not gonna put it up with any any dirt or anywhere anything else how does this go in So it looks like I, okay, so it looks like just that little circle just lines up, I guess. All right. All right. There we go. All this and again the fact that this is like that loose I, I feel like this belt definitely needs replaced which sucks because I have no idea where to get DCO3 belts or how feasible that actually is but this thing definitely is not the tightest belt on here for sure
Okay, this isn't in here right, is it? So that's how it seems like it's in, right? Oh, I see. What? I really don't want to put this back in here wrong. Uh, goodness. We got some dust right there as well. I'm going to say this. So yeah, that is in, that is on, right? Would that not go in the same way? What am I doing wrong here? Am I gonna have to look up a video on this? Oh goodness. There's like some sand and stuff at the edge of this. Right, right here. All right. Uh, I'm probably going to have to. Probably have to figure this out because I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Oh, was that it? It just wasn't the cap was just coming off. I was overthinking it the whole time. Wait, no. I just, I swear, I literally just had it. I, this, oh, I hate, oh, okay. This is annoying. What is up with these machines having just the goofiest? Just the goofiest designs. Okay, actually, I think I think I, I think I just got that right. So I think it sits in. Okay, I think it sits in at that angle. And then this just pushes on. There we go. There we go. Awesome. So I, I did end up getting that. And we just lock these into place. There we go. Awesome. I didn't actually end up needing any sort of video or anything. Alright. So. There's all that stuff that we extracted. And we'll go ahead and look at the bin. And see. See what all we got. Of course, it all just wrapped around the shroud, uh, as you'd expect. And wow, it got caught up in here too. Yeah. Okay, so not great. Definitely can't handle fluff very well. You can see some stuff on that inner cyclone, and there is some fine dust in that inner cyclone, and at the bottom here. Well, actually, not a whole lot. But there is some fine dust in here. So it actually didn't do too bad. Oh, and there's a clump of hair. Actually, there's a good amount of hair in there. 
I'm actually, wow, I'm actually kind of impressed. I didn't expect this thing to actually do okay. You know, I would have just kind of assume that this thing was would just be awful at any sort of cleaning. And obviously, I imagine it'd be, I assume at least, that it'd be out cleaned by, you know, a full-size Dyson. Um, especially a modern one. But, yeah, did good. I mean, there's a whole layer, you can see there's a whole layer of fine dust on the inside of the bin now. Where it looks cloudier than it otherwise would. So, I mean, it's definitely got some stuff. So, click that back together. And, yeah. Try to put this back on. But yeah, so try to separate the... Again, there's some hair. Again, it's really hard to see mixed in with the fibers, but there's some good stuff mixed in there. See, and then here's the here's the big clump of goodness knows what. But yeah, so honestly, granted I hadn't vacuumed in a few days, but that's not bad. From this little area. Honestly, I, I expected it to I expected it not to get all that much. So hey, it did better than I expected. You know, for a twenty plus year old twenty five plus year old machine. Uh, whenever this particular one was made. This one definitely is gonna be a, a Malaysian one. At least I believe, from what I remember. Oh no, this this one was made. Oh no, yeah. Made in Malaysia by Dyson Limited. Yes, this one was made in Malaysia. And this particular one was made on I believe I believe that 01-03, I believe that means 2003. Or no, that'd be 2001, right? Cuz that's how they format it. Or, no, that's not right. It's the month and the... It's the day and the month that are formatted differently. The year is always the same. So I'm not really sure how to read that. But either way... Ooh, that creaking. Love to hear it. Yeah. I wonder what would happen if I tried to call that UK helpline. I don't even think my phone could dial that because of the way the digits are. But either way... My phone... Okay. But yeah, so, anyways, that is the DC-03. Not really sure what else to say about it right now. Obviously, I need to do some more testing. And, uh, yeah, so there will be more videos on it. This video was obscenely long for no reason. But, either way, it was an overview, it was a demo, it was a lot of that stuff kind of all in one. So, more of a movie type thing. And then I will do separate videos on that. There will be plenty more videos on the DC-03, including ones where I compare it to the Fury. And of course, speaking of the Fury, uh, we will use that to probably clean this up. I don't know. The fluff I'll probably just throw away. Because, I mean, that looks like it's almost full already. I don't know what I'll use. Either way. But yeah, so it did get some stuff. I still need to figure out that filter thing. But yeah, this cute little thing does indeed work. I mean, obviously I expected that, but as far as uh, performance-wise, it actually does not too terribly. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, there will be more videos on it, of course. Um, I'll do some more commentary on it as well. Um, use it a bit more to kind of field a better opinion on it. And, of course, it will get the full review treatment, even though, um, you know, there's obviously not a lot of American viewers that might, you know, know much about these. But to actually see one of these reviewed in the United States and also compared to the closest U.S. equivalent, which is the Iona Phantom Fury, 
um, I think that'd be an interesting set of videos. And it's one that I've always wanted to do, and I've always vowed to do in a situation where I did finally get a DC-03. And now that I have, it's, well, it's time to put up or shut up. And I'll definitely be doing some more videos on this machine. Because honestly, the more and more I use it, the more... Like, whenever I'm not using this, I, I get kind of annoyed. I'm like, oh, that thing, it's... It feels so brittle, and it's just, it's loud, and it's annoying, and it doesn't clean well. But then I actually use it. And yeah, when I leave when I leave it running when it's upright, it's super annoying. But when I'm actually just using it reclined and, you know, vacuuming the carpets with it, it actually doesn't sound that bad. I mean, obviously, if I was using the tools, it, then it, would, it sounds a little bit more squealy, but it's not too bad. But either way, there will be more videos on this, and I'll even do some experimentation with some attachments. I think that might make a fun video, see if the Tangle Free Turbine and all that works on this. That might make an interesting video. But yeah, so DC-03, one of many videos with this machine, but kind of the first one to really kind of get the ball rolling on it. Um, of course, Thanksgiving's coming up and all that, so after that, I'll probably do some more on this. And the DC-04 as well, which thankfully that one I don't need to lug the converter because um, it does have a US motor in it, so it's just got a plug adapter on it. This actually needs the converter, of course, because it is 220. But yeah, pretty fascinating, I gotta say. Very fascinating machine. You never see these in the US, especially a very pristine example like this one. I mean, well, there's like a little bit of stress right there, but honestly, this thing is in good shape. Like these like to go brittle and break up here and all that. Um, thankfully, this one's okay knock on wood i really because my upstairs i've had machines that i keep upstairs fade so i really 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 hope that i can avoid that and any tips on how to prevent